Hello, hi, welcome, welcome back. Whichever one applies to you, then uh, then take that one on board. Right, we can hear Jess now fighting with her bed because I've just took the camera on. So, um, here we are. I haven't done a video on this for a couple of days. I have been doing a little bit of work off camera. Um, today is Monday the 15th, is it the 15th? Yes, it's the 15th of April 2024. And um, as I said, I've done a bit of work off camera. You can see I've done some painting here. We have some grey bits. Uh, we have uh, some black primer on here, doing some seam checking. And also I've got some grey primer on here. <laughs> Just blew that dust off. Doing some seam checking on here. Grey grey primer is the best primer for seam checking. So around here where we got these, um, where we had that seam and I've rubbed it out, all the super glue was in there. That's the best thing to do. I have had to put a couple of bits of super glue, one there, one there. And, uh, and then also on the back here, I had a little undercut there and I had a great big bulge here. I couldn't believe it. When I put grey primer on there, it really showed up. Um, but I had quite a step. So this panel here was quite raised. Um, if you're watching Jeff's videos, I've just seen his, I think it's part 14, is it? He's just put out where he's fitting his front fenders and everything. Um, he's done this completely different to me. So go take a look at his channel, Jeff Donahue Scale Modeling. Uh, go and take a look at his channel. You may prefer his way of doing it. Uh, but um, I'm quite happy that this has come out. We've both gone down the same route of assembling the body and having it as a complete unit to put on the chassis. Whereas the kit would have you build it up bit by bit and keep adding. Um, but we've basically both gone for this, I think, because of the painting. Um, certainly that's why I've done it. So um, that's one thing I've done off camera. And obviously the bits of grey paint and everything. And here you can see my uh, little cardboard box here. We've done some um, painting here. I fitted these. Did I video this? Yes, I did, because I showed you the little wire loops that I made, didn't I? But what I've done is done all this before gluing them on so that I can get paint on there. And as you can see, they've been primed in black and they've been painted in grey. And we've got one panel here, which is which is out of the fret and been sanded down and everything. We've got here. So you can see how these are going to fit. They go in there and they fit absolutely beautifully. Now we've got... If you haven't been watching this, you won't be familiar with this. But for some unknown reason, we've got three pieces of photo etch for each side. These are basically the... Um, these are going to fit into the body here. Okay, so they're going to go in like that. And basically they fold up and they come down and they become the walkways for the uh, gun operators. Now, or the gun crew, whatever you want to call them... I I'm, I'm probably going to have mine down because I want to have the gun in um, in the firing position. Um, but it looks like because we've got these little tiny pins on here, we have these tiny little pivoting pins and we have holes in here. It looks like we could actually have them operable. But if they go in the sides like so, they will fit in like that. Just like that. Come on, go in, please. They, they will fit in something like that. Um, so you can have it in transport mode with your gun in its in its lock and everything, or you can have them down. So uh, we will probably have them down. Um, Luke Carswell of uh, Black Rifle Modelworks fame has very kindly offered the... If you remember, I did a review... I've put it away, where is it? It's over there. If you remember, I did a review of the Border Model 88mm gun. Um, and that comes with crew figures. I think there's six or eight crew figures. And Luke Carswell, who's a fantastic figure painter, has kindly offered to paint them for me, should I wish. Um, I may well take him up on that. Or shall I teach myself? I don't know. But, um, or have him teach me indeed. But he's basically offered to paint them so I could actually use them and have them on this on this model. Because there are you know crew figures in all sorts of different poses. So, um, anyway, so that's what I've been doing off camera. Right, so we've got all this done now, so we need to get those glued in. Um, and, and there is, you know, a lot of benefit, especially with photo etch guys, when you are doing this sort of thing. Paint behind the photo etch, paint the photo etch, get the paint in all the different angles, and make sure you don't have any bits of brass showing through, because once you start to get your German grey down, or whatever colour you're going to use, um, you can sort of start to see the brass coming through. And, you know, with, with these here, these have had etch primed on them. Um, and then they've had uh, black and then they've had the grey. So uh, so basically, yeah, they've had a lot of paint on them. Um, 
but they're you know they're painted now and what I've done is sprayed like this angle then that angle then that angle then that angle to make sure because you've got to remember this is like three dimensional and if you if you just spray it flat on the front when you look at it like this so if you spray it like that and it's gray when you look at it like that you'll see bright brass because you haven't got the edges so uh, bear that in mind do all, do all the, the four different angles and everything and then you'll be good to go right so so they're ready to cut out and, and glue in that's you know you're not going to need to see that that's real simple what i'll probably do is put them in and then just put a tiny drop of glue on the outer ones on the on the on the top ones um because and then that can hold in the other two but quite why there's three i do not know i i I find it hard to believe there would have been three layers of mesh there. I, I don't know why Tacom have done this. I really don't. Uh, it's, it's something we, we have to look into. Um, Jeff has also been talking about colours. This area in here, from what I can see, was German grey. I would have thought, as he initially said, this area in here would be like cream or white or something. But looking at the photographs in the book that comes with this kit, it does look like they are dark, dark, dark grey. So uh, bear that in mind. Now, the ones that were in Hungary uh, were yellow with the uh, green and red spots. I'm not sure if they would have been previously grey, so maybe they would all be grey in there. But if you are going to do the Hungarian version with the yellow with the green and red spots, um, bear in mind that that, that actual Vomag had the, the shield on the gun, and that doesn't come with this kit. You get three shields in the uh, border kit, you apparently get three shields in the Dragon 88 millimeter kit as well, but it would appear that this is over scale, so I'm not sure how well they're gonna fit. Right, so enough waffling. Um, you also get really strange, you get these, U2, there's, these are uprights, so that when the, these sides are down, you can have uprights in these posts here, and I guess there'd be a rope between them. I don't know, but we'll have to have a look into that. Um, and as you know from the previous parts, we've also done some work on the gun, so we're uh, we're getting ready for that as well. So that's going to go in there, like so, get, get the breech together and everything. So uh, yeah, lots and lots of work to do. I'm probably going to be darting around in this bit because we're going to be looking at stuff. Um, front fenders, I don't understand. I've just watched Jeff's video, and I'm at the same stage of wanting to fit the front fenders. The only difference is he's actually built his front end up as a um, as a unit so he's got his radiator grill his side pieces here and his front bulkhead with floor as one piece and then the rest of this is all one piece whereas i've gone the other way i've got all of this as one piece and i've got those sides in there glued to the actual chassis so i'm ready now to fit these fenders and what i was saying was i saying or was i just thinking i can't remember now i was dry fitting this earlier now what i found was the straight parts of the bulkhead here. So these bits here and here were holding the fenders apart, which was really, really strange. Um, and when I watched Jeff fit his tonight on his video, he actually fitted the fenders in. They've got like a, a typical of this kit, a tiny, tiny little raised tab on there you can see and a tiny tiny little slot in there they could have done that at least double the size and they are basically going to go in like that and then you've got brackets to go in there but the brackets aren't going to do anything um but i just wanted to get this to um to fit together now I'm, i'd love to fit them now but i think it might be more sensible to get all this fitted first because Let's get that to go through there because when this body drops on Jeff was also saying about having the body come forward he's had to do exactly the same as me and remove that tab from there to allow the body to go forward this um there's a box that goes in here which I haven't fitted yet and apparently that butts up against something or other so yeah um very interesting that we're finding we're both discovering the same thing and the other thing is this bulkhead here, which is the back of the cab, butts up against that cross member there. So there may be some clearance required there. But you can see that I can get mine to go up together. And these, this is all butted up nicely here. Okay. Um, that one there is the same. So um, as I, I can show you now, when I put these fenders on, is this one, isn't it? 
when I put these fenders on, if I line that slot up in there, you can see that this vertical part of the bulkhead is kind of up against it and holding it away. So I think that needs to be narrowed down a little bit, just a touch. But it would be good to have that part of the fender there glued to the side of that bulkhead as well. That's going to add a lot of strength to it and for otherwise flimsy sort of assembly. But we can see we can see here that uh, you know it's not um, doesn't seem to be lending itself. It doesn't seem to want to go together. But we shall see. So I may well leave those fenders until I permanently fit this on. Um, probably the best bet actually because I can't fit them now and glue them to the side of the bulkhead. Um, if I'd done it like Jeff has, I would be able to because he's got that attached to those pieces there. So let's have a look at what we're going to do next and um, we'll come back. Engine's all primed and everything now. That's ready for a coat of steel paint and uh, I've got that rear prop shaft painted as well so that can come off and go into the box with a little curry sauce pot. So um, yeah, we're good to go. Let's see what we're going to do next. Right, so looking through the instructions of what else we can do, uh, we've got these outriggers here, which you, which you can have out or you can have folded up. But we have um, non-glued joints here, so I wonder if we can sort of have it all operable. I don't know. But uh, you can see here we've got this these two parts here, N26, going together. Uh, and they're going to obviously be, have to be left to dry and sanded and everything. I've got them off the sprue here. I haven't worried about cleaning the sprue nibs up because they're on a... A face that's going to be filled and sanded and everything but they go together they've got these I know you I know you're going to be amazed they've got these tiny little location tabs um, which is the story of my life with this thing uh, and they kind of they kind of stop it aligning properly I think but I'm not going to worry too much about it because they're they're buried deep in the chassis um, but they're quite difficult to Get together so my suggestion is get a clamp on there level them out and then get a clamp on there have a look at the back end and make sure you've got it all sort of looking good and then we can get some extra thin inside and that'll go pin around the joints and just get it to sort of kind of tack together as it were and then come to the front again and make sure it's level that way because there's no location <laughs> so I know you're going to be really shocked there's no location for it at the front end at all I'm calling this the front end it's the outer end isn't it try and get some glue on the brush and then we'll get some glue into there or cement should I say and uh, get the clamp on there just check we're all good Check we're nice and flush on the back. We can always sand that flat anyway at the back. It's really making sure these pins are all level in, in two dimensions is the most important thing here, I think. Let's get that clamp together. Look at the back end. Another drop of extra thin in there. These have got some work to do. I think I'm going to put another drop of extra thin in this one as well. Just to sort of help it. And then they are going to go into the side of the chassis in those little locations you can see there, which are absolutely massive. So, uh, yeah. Right. Um, so we'll leave those to dry and then we'll come back and look at building up these arms. You've got left and right. They're different part numbers. These are N26 all the way through. So we can cross them out. But um, the rest of it is different part numbers with well, the actual arms themselves. Are, uh, are different part numbers so um, we've also got you can see we've got these these frames here going into the inside of the bodywork and I'm not quite sure what these loops are for but uh, I'm sure it'll all come clear oh they do actually go around those air tanks okay so um, we won't be able to fit those until we've actually fitted the body to the chassis so we won't be able to fit these until we fitted the body to the chassis Interesting. Very interesting. We've also got that little uh, mechanism there to build up, which is the, um, it looks like it's operable. This is the little uh, uh, lock for the gun, the transport lock for the gun. 
we've got those bits on there to go on the back of the body as well but uh, I don't want to fit them until I'm 100% that all the sanding has been done so there we are so we've got a little transport cradle there we could get that built up but again I want to make sure all the seams are good before we start fitting any fiddly bits to that and then our truck is kind of done we've got some backtracking to do because we've messed around with the um, build sequence so much but anyway we'll uh, have a look at that in a minute and we're back so these have all dried now they've had a few hours to dry as you can see sanded out the joints with the uh, sprue nibs on there sanded the backs nice and flat and then there you're actually going to locate in those little recesses in the chassis there so uh, hopefully we'll get a good strong joint in there we'll have to get the paint off because um, it's a very very small recess it could have been a lot deeper with a tab on it or something so um, going through here we've got these outriggers so these are there's one lot here and there's one lot over the page so these here are going to assemble we've got to make sure we've got 12 and 13 and you've got 11 and 9 um, these parts here are the same so there's no sort of left and right um, and also you can't I suppose you could put these together wrong if you were that stupid but, uh, there we go that, that would be them put together wrong <laughs> so um, obviously when you put them together right the end is going to form a round shaft like so be careful there's a little tab on the bottom there careful not to snap that off and then this end is going to form the, the wrap around for the hinge. So uh, what we do is we get one of these, we drop that in there. And then we place that over the top and glue it in without getting any glue on that hinge. So that's going to be quite difficult. So what I think I'm going to do is get some extra thin. I haven't topped my extra thin up, which I should have done. Because the bottle is very, very low. Okay, so we get some extra thin in there and we'll get a clamp on there straight away we'll get a peg on there hold that together and then that's a seam that's going to have to be dealt with and i'm going to do the same on the other one and let it dry because basically what's going to happen is that seam i've got some glue on the clamp there i see let's just sand that away uh, what's going to happen is this is going to, the peg is going to get in the way of gluing anything else. So, uh, there we go. There we are. Right. I really need to top my extra thin up because it's uh, it's very, very low and I have to splash it around to get anything on the brush. I know you can pull the end of the brush out, but uh, it doesn't seem to work on the bottle I've got at the moment because if you pull the, if you pull the brush out a tad, it just um, falls out. So there we go. Right, so we're going to clamp that one as well. Be careful of that little nubbin, as I said, down on the bottom there. So we can clamp that together, make sure it's nicely aligned. And just let that dry for a while. Just to tack off. You see there's hardly any glue in there at all. Come on, give me some cement please. There we go. Just leave that to go off for a few minutes and then we'll glue the rest of it. Okay, so I've done that one. I'll show you how we've done this one. Um, the best thing to do, I find, when you've got moving parts, if you use the quick setting in the area where the pin is, I'm going to put a drop in there. And I'm going to put a drop in there. Then it capillary around. Now, what I find with the quick setting is, if any glue does get on the part, you'll feel it go sticky. Okay, so we can leave it like that, just hold that like that. And that feels absolutely fine. But what you'll find is if you do get glue on the part, you just keep doing this. Okay, and all of a sudden, boom, it just goes loose. And that's why I always use the quick setting on tracks and stuff, when you've got multi-part tracks to glue together. Um, and if you, if you follow my channel and you follow me for years, then you'll know that's what I do. 
and it's um I find it's the best way to glue around moving parts is to uh, is to do that there we go right so there we are that's that done get a peg back on there just check that one's moving that's fine just check this one yep that's fine it did feel slightly stuck but it won't stick up now so there we go so they're ready to go on um, obviously we've got a left and a right now so we can cross those out now I'm not going to fit these now what we're going to do is go on and get all this assembly here built up to go on the top um, but I'm not going to fit these now because as you can see, they go on the chassis and then they've got this support which goes on the body. So, and that bracket wraps around the air tank. So we need to have the body assembled. So we need to follow their build sequence here. We need to have the body attached to the chassis before we fit these. So, um, so there we go. It's also worth noting if you are going to fold them round, you know, do this before you glue those doors on. So I think Jeff has glued those doors on already. So bear that in mind, Jeff, if you are having... I think you're, you're I think you're building yours like mine, aren't you? In fighting mode, but if you are doing it in transport mode, remember to put that in there before you glue that end, because otherwise you won't be able to get it around. Because all this mechanism on the top here, this bit here, is all going to be in behind that door. So uh, there we go. Right. So I guess we're going to assemble these little bits here and get those together and let them dry, and then uh, and then go from there. It's going to be the same on this. So whenever we've got a U sprue, there's two of them. So we'll just leave it at that. Right, see you in a minute. All right, so I've got all these parts off the sprue and I've glued these two halves together. So we've got U17, 16, 20 and 12. And this is the, the sort of gearbox for winding up the, the uh, feet. Glued these halves together. Very complex little fit. It's like these, these little pins and stuff on here are moulded onto one half and then there's recesses in the other. So that gives you alignment. You get a pair of tweezers and just squeeze them to get them sort of aligned so you end up with a circle and not you know, that. Uh, and that's that, really. Um, and then on the top, um, we've got this rectangular part that's supposed to fit into here. This is I've left these attached to the sprue to make life a bit easier. And the flat here on this angled part has to go to the hole where the handle's going to go. So they're going to go in. It's going to go in like, like that sort of thing. But, as you guessed, we've got a tiny, tiny little square pin on there um, I'm just going to sand the end of that flat and it's too big to go into the hole in there so what we got to do is reduce the size of this square so what I'm doing here is coming in with a knife we've got the square there and I'm just taking away a little bit of plastic from all four sides just like so just to make it uh, a smaller square so it will physically fit in there so just scrape away those bits that I've just cut off I'm just going to look through my magnifier to make sure I have got them all off yes I have and now that should fit in there yes it does it fits in there and it locks okay so that's what we're after now these have also got to fit onto the top of these, so I hope these are the right size. To go in. Yes, they are. They're fine. So uh, it's these that are too big. You could also, or of course, you could open these up, but then they'll be too big for, for those over there. So, uh, so there we go. So what I'm going to do now is glue them onto there. So this one is going to go... So that that hole, that flat on that chevron part, of that angled part, is is pointing towards there. So grab a drop of extra thin on here. And then push that into there. Like so. There we go, that's gone in. Lovely. 
you've got the thickness of this part, so you've got half of the square going in from this side, and the other half is on there, going in from that side, so... Mm. It's not going to be the strongest of joints, is it? There we are. So let the gel, let the glue gel off, and then we can just check it's all straight. I just want to check this one is the same. Yes, this one also has the angle towards the handle. So I know this one fits because I did it previously. I'm thinking I better grab this with some tweezers. Again, that flat's going to point towards where the handle goes. So it's going to go in like that. Wow. There we go. So you can see both of them in now. I'm just going to put a ring of cement around that one. What we can do is give them a little squeeze. We're in mini art territory here with these bits. They're absolutely tiny and multi-part assemblies. But um, the detail is superb. There we go. Right. So we're going to leave those to dry and then we can clean them up and everything. Um, I'm not going to fit those handles yet because they are definitely going to get snapped off. So uh, what we'll do is put these to one side. Get a, um, I think I'll put them in a clothes peg. Oh, God. No, I won't. I'll just leave them like that. Let them dry. Those two little handles can stay there. And then when all this is dry, we can get it all fitted. So um, I guess now we need to start looking at some of these doors, don't we? And this bodywork. So we go back to here. These doors here. Um, I'm going to do them shut because I don't really know what goes in there and I don't think they would be open while they're in firing mode because they'd be in the way wouldn't they I don't know what they, they probably keep personal like coats or maybe like the blanket for, for cover because they would have a blanket over the windscreen when they were firing um, which is something worth looking at but I uh, don't know um, let's have a look. We've also got, I'm definitely going to close these up, definitely, because there's nothing to go in there. So that is here. So they are N10. So N is a double screw. So we'll get those off, get them cleaned up, we can get those glued on. Once again, as you can see, the good old Tuckham trait, we've got the sprue nibs going onto the front face rather than having them go into the sides. Um, I can see where they've done it because you have a step lip around there, which a lot of manufacturers will put a sprue nib on or sprue gate on. And, uh, you know, it makes it a bit more difficult to clean up. So we'll have to be careful now with removing these gates from here because we've got detail on here that we don't want to run damage. I'm going to put a brand new blade in my knife, I think, because that's tearing. I've got a new blade. Okay, so as you can see here, we can come in with the knife and we can just very gently cut these little lumps away. Let the knife do the work. Don't go hacking through it. Just let the knife cut it away. And then you won't get any um, horrible marks that you have to go back and fill. Where you've, uh, you know, torn a chunk of the plastic out. Once you've got rid of most of it, there's a bit more can come off of there. And I'm not scraping it, I'm actually cutting it. And then I've got my little PE sander here because it's hard. You don't want to be using a sponge in an area like this. And we can just gently sand away until the sprue nib disappears. You can put some black uh, ink on there if you want to. Until all the ink disappears and you know you're down flat. Come down to you on this side. Just put a couple of spots around the sprue nib like that. And then and then you can just 
just sand away until the black mark disappears and then you know you're flat. If you don't have one of these, um, I would thoroughly recommend getting one of these. These are brilliant. These are the little um, nail files you get from supermarkets. And you can cut that into a narrow strip or whatever and you've got basically that. You've got a hard sander. So I um, thoroughly recommend those. For, uh, for all your sanding work, you know, where you need, where you don't want a sponge, where you want something hard. I can see a tiny little black spot left there still. I think we're going to leave that there. And I can feel we've got a bit of a an edge. So we'll just go along the edge again with the hard sander. And that's that. That's that one cleaned up. So one down. 839 to go. Okay, so I'll uh, put this in now and fit it first rather than glue because if you put glue in first you'll probably get glue oozing out. So that's just going to pop in there like that. Oh wow. I'll tell you what, I've knocked this kit left, right and centre but I'll tell you that's the nicest fitting panel I've ever seen. That is awesome. Well done to the uh, tool maker. That is absolutely awesome. That is the nicest fitting door I've ever seen. What I'm going to do is put a tiny drop of extra thin on each hinge. Hopefully that will be enough to hold it in place. In hindsight I would have glued that door in first so I could have glued it from the back before I put that toolbox in. But uh, there we go. Let's see if the other one's as good. Just check our clean up. Just check everything's good before we put it in. Unless they've got all the interior detail moulded on, there's no ejector pin marks. So, you know, if you want to have this door in the open position, you can glue it in like that, and you've got all the latch detail and everything in there, which is very nice. Oops. So, is this one going to fit as nicely? No, it doesn't. It doesn't want to go in. For some reason, it doesn't want to go in. Now, why is that? It wants a push, that's what it is. It needs a shove to get it in there. Yeah, it's popping out of the back. I think it's the internal... I think it's the internal framing here that's preventing it. So if we just... Just scrape some plastic from there. That should give us. Look at that, that's all it took. It's gone in now. So your kit will probably be the same if you're building one. Put some cement on those hinges. There we go. I mean, they wouldn't have fitted perfectly anyway. It's a war machine. And saying that, it's German, so it probably would have been perfect. They were uh, very fussy. There we go. So that's that in. What I might do is just put one little spot of extra thin down in there. And I saw that capillary around, so I'll do the same on this side. Just to make sure it doesn't all just fall apart. There we are. Right, so that's those in. Uh, now we've got the other doors in that, which I haven't decided yet. We've got a fuel filler going in there. Um, and we've also got these tiny little handles, U5, going on everything. Now obviously I'm not going to fit them until I all the bodies fit and everything. But we've done, we've done those, so they're good to go. Um, now these doors here, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm going to have to get some aftermarket shells. I think if I'm going to display it with the doors open and have the shells on display and everything. I've also got the shells in the border model kit. So um, I may have some shells in my spares box as well. But, uh, there we go. Um, I could always make some resin copies, couldn't I? In fact, the border model kit, I believe, has photo etch for the tail end of the shells. So it would be nice to actually make make a couple of those up and then make a resin cast of those and then paint them up and polish them. 
So we've got these silly little bits here going on, which is just going to get snapped off. So I'm not going to do any of that. Um, E5 and E6. This rear door here, this is access for the spare wheel, which I'm not using. So I'm going to close them up. So let's get them off and, uh, and get them. Okay, so on these two, as you can see, they haven't felt the need to go over the front face. So don't know why they did on the others. A little bit of flash on there as well. So get these off, get them cleaned up and get them glued in. All right, so they're off, cleaned up. A little bit of flash on them, so best to go all the way around the sides because there's like a like a mould seam around the edge of all the parts in this model. So this door is going to go on first. Uh, so this is the left one. So that's going to go into there. Whoops. That's going to go into there like so. And that is an absolutely stunning fit. And then this one is going to overlap it. Like that, and I can see that I've still got a little bit of sprue nib on the bottom of there. Looks uneven on that edge, so I'm just gonna just make sure. It's still there. Oh, that one fell out on me. There we go. Right. So, once again, they fit beautifully. However, I think I'm going to take some material off the end of this flat door because I think What's happening is they're overlapping and they're kind of holding each other open. Well, it's holding that right hand one open. So I'm going to take some plastic off of there and see if that helps. Yeah, that door for some reason is not going down. When it goes together it's not going down so maybe we should glue them together first. Maybe that latch is holding it out. Does it fit okay on its own? Okay it doesn't really want to fit very well on its own so I've got a feeling this latch detail on the inside is causing us some issues, so we can say goodbye to that. Just like so. Let's see if that helps. There we go, nice and flat now, and then hopefully this one will go in nice and flat as well. There we are, look at that, all lovely. Hunky dory. So Drop of extra thin on the hinges. One, two. One, two. And they're going to chance a drop in there and then not touch it. There we are. Beautifully fitting doors. Absolutely remarkable the fit of these doors. It's beautiful. Notice I'm not touching anything because if I do, I'm going to get glue ooze out and I'll look like a welded joint when I want it to look like a, a loose door that's shut. So you can see this one is slightly open compared to that one, but that's great. It gives us a bit of a sort of natural look to it. So there we are. So that's E5 and E6 taken care of. And we've got these drum assemblies to build up. I'm not going to do those yet because they'll just get broken off. We've got all this to do again, Blech. another two times, one on the front, one on the back, so I'll get those done, I'll do them off camera. Um, and we're pretty much getting there ready to start putting all this together. So uh, let me get those other two little assemblies built up for the tops of those uh, jacks and, um, and then I'll come. Okay, back. so um, looking at these assemblies here, we've got one on the front, one on the back, so I've made two of each. So we've got these parts here, which is in. M44 and M48, so they go together. 
um, be very careful to make sure they're all aligned because they they really have no proper alignment and they'll, they'll easily just be anywhere you know so uh, keep an eye on that um, especially on the tops they want to they seem to want to be making uh, ovals rather than circles so uh, keep an eye on that so we've got that there and then I've got these assemblies here which I made earlier and I've, there's another two I've just made uh, so they've gone on like reducing the size of that square and everything and these are basically going to sit on the top of there like so just like that uh, and then get glued on but I want to get them all cleaned up first but I want the cement to be really hard before I start cleaning things up so they can just sit there in fact we'll put those over there to one side and we'll give them their own little pot I think to sit in because uh, they're going to easily be flicked off the table and lost so we've got these cable reels on the back. Now I asked uh, before what these were for and uh, you guys came in your droves and told me they're apparently um, communications cables so they would have had, uh, you know, um, the, the the radio equipment of the day that was picking up positions of aircraft and they could wire the wire the coordinates to the to the gun so they could aim the gun and, and shoot the gun. Um, so on here what they've got is this centre reel with a slot cut out of it and then this sort of what looks like a saucepan being glued to the top so I'm thinking surely there should be cable on there and what on earth is that U19 now um, have a look in the comments below this video because I'm asking the question what is that and there will be lots of people who know this inside out I'm assuming it's some sort of connector that connects to the truck that, that's got the radio equipment so I'm looking in I'm looking in here and this is the book that came with the model and you can see on the back here here's a, a genuine photograph and you can see there's the cable and we've got the there's, there's obviously cable in there it's not just this this disc like they're showing us there so um but I can't see that thing on there unless that's it on the top and I couldn't see any other pictures of it so um you know it's uh it's it's hard to know really what's going on here uh, maybe we can see them. Yeah, we can see on this 88 millimeter here. We can see there's the cable reel in this. That may be the um, the thing we're talking about, the saucepan, the connector, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, I'll have to look at some other photographs on on Google. But um, as some of you will know, I just got the border model 88 millimeter gun. So I picked that up and had a look. And in the instructions, um, you can see here. Here we have the cable reels, so you can see the assembly is practically identical. Okay, we've got that E6 and N34, both centre hubs with a with a sort of slot cut out of them. But then border model give you a cable to go around, moulded in plastic, and that E1, you've got the saucepan thing there. That's also, um, you know, that, that and that connects to the end of the cable. So I'm assuming that is some sort of connector or maybe other cables come off it i don't know but um have a look in the comments below because there are people out there that know all this inside out and they will inform me and in turn they will inform you as well um so yeah if we look at the gas work parts we've got the um sorry i should have gone out of the bag shouldn't i mr unprepared um if we look at the das work parts you can see we have this this central reel here with the with the slot in it and then we've got the end plates there and then we've got the carriers there um where's that saucepan type thing what part number was that well that's a u part number so that'll be on the little u sprue and then in the border model you've got identical parts well identical they're actually they're actually a little bit nicer i think they're a bit crisper um you can see here we've got those those cable reels Okay, and as you can see, the border model ones are a little bit crisper, I think, than the dashboard. The, the dashboard ones are very, very nice, don't get me wrong, but they are a bit flashy. And these are very, very crisp and very, very sharp. Uh, and then we've got that central piece there, which is the same, which is like this. This, And then we've got the cable here going around the outside. So what I think I might do is... Um, in fact, we've got one of those broken off. No, we haven't. Let's get this one off. I think what I might do is um, take a mould off of this cable. That'll fit inside there then on the uh, on the border, but on the 
Dasperate kit. Oh, the trouble is the cable's narrow. It's narrower than the Dasperate kit, so I'll just have to use ordinary cable. But um, but there we go. The other thing you can do is take a roll off a very fine threaded bolt, of course. But uh, yeah, so um, it's it's a bit weird what Dasperate have done here, and the bit I don't really don't understand is why they're telling us to just glue this. To just glue this thing onto there when it should be on the end of a cable it shouldn't just be stuck on there so don't do that guys that's not right and I don't know why they've got this slot in here again down the comments down below please guys and let us know because uh, if that's correct or if that should be fully round what I'll do is I'll, I'll get some tube and and fill that in and then put some cable around it um, please tell us is that an actual connector should it be fit to the end of the cable or, or would it have been kept separately stored and the cable would just be loose Answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> no answers down below. So, um, these I think are dry now. You can see they're all uh, ready to go. So they can be unpegged. Check the check those for round. Just give that a little tweak. That hinge is lovely as well. So there we are, that's them all done. Um, so I think now what we're going to have to start doing is thinking about because we're waiting for stuff to dry. I think we're going to have to start thinking about doing some more on the gun. See you in a second. Okay, so I've got the parts off now for the for this breech block. Um, there's some very, very tiny parts here. This part here, H48, um, mine, the, the handle on the end actually snapped off, but we'll see how it looks when it's all together. Um, so yeah, the H48 here, you've got a handle on one end and then you've got a little pin on that end and it's the... The pin end that snapped off so uh, we'll just have to stick it on the top it looks like it might be underneath that lever there anyway so that's good um, right so starting off with the breech block uh, and yes I've got another complaint um, we've got this part here L42 which is absolutely fine it has this pin on there that is probably the smallest locating pin I have ever seen on anything can you see it there it is absolutely tiny how I haven't knocked it off I do not know um, I've come in with a piece of rolled up wet and dry just to sand the there's massive mold seams on these parts massive sprue gates as well so um, plenty of cleanup required um, so that's great that part there that's fine L42 L36 we've got this piece on the end and as you can see we've got this is the inside okay so this is going to glue over the end of the breech block and this is the outside so this is the part that's visible and they've got an ejector pin mark in it so on the inside it's beautifully molded and on the outside it's just flat plastic with an ejector pin mark same here this part here goes on with this raised area sticking out as you can see great big ejector pin mark in the middle on the inside beautifully molded all nice and smooth and everything so yeah well done <sighs> Right, so that's going to go on there, but you'll see straight away there is an issue. That's going to go on there, but it doesn't actually fit into the recess properly. So we're going to have to do some surgery, I think, to fit it in. Um, we've also got, not only do we have ejector pin marks on the face that's going to be showing, but we've got the sprue gates, as you can see there, the sprue gates are also on this front face so thanks for that it's nice that you go out of your way to to make us happy so there we are okay so where's my radius blade here it is over here Probably better to leave this until after it's gone together, to be honest. Get in there and remove that. So how's this going to go together? So that's going to sit on there like that. But it doesn't... It doesn't seem to want to go in sort of feels like it should be sitting in there rather than on there I guess we'll have to build the 
build the breech block up and see if it'll fit. Although that's the... Is that the base there? And that has got to slide into there. Oh, so it does fit with that sticking out like that. So, i got to be honest, guys. I, I'm starting to lose the will to live with this thing. It's, um, I think Jeff is... Uh, as I've said on many occasions, Jeff isn't as vocal as me. I think he's getting pretty fed up with it as well. By the tone of his voice. Um, and then we've got this piece here. I've just noticed something else. There's a piece that's appeared there that there isn't any instructions. So we've got this piece here. So got that that way round with that panel towards me. And this one's going to go with the hole. towards me so it's going to go on like that oh god only knows how it's going to go it's like that is it yeah that jack that little tiny location pin on the front i still haven't broken it off so i think what i'll do is put a drop of cement on here first Just so it stays in place and then I think we'll just put some around there and then we'll just let that dry and then we've got a lot of sanding to do ejector pin marks to fill if they're in fact visible that one's definitely going to be visible but as we can see here we've got this assembly and that's how it is in my hand that's how it is in the instructions this block has appeared in the top right hand corner that looks very much like that piece there and they're telling you to put it there so I don't quite know what's going on here now that block is back up on there I hope you see what I'm saying here guys this piece here H19 they're showing that glued to the back of M25. M25 is this piece here. And as you can see, it's got that little notch in it for that part to go in. And they've got that block on the back of the breech block here. And then here it is back on the... So that's obviously where it goes then. But that is going to slide over that is that one this is the bottom one this is going to slide into that gap there this is actually going to slide into there like so so that's your loading there and then slide that across and then boom Right, so let's do this bottom bit next. Um, so I've got this piece here, which is M24, and then this piece here, which is L2, and that is going to sit in there like that. I haven't tested any of this before putting the camera on. So that's a very tight fit in there. So I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to sand some material from this back edge only a drop, only a touch let's make it less of a tight fit it's still too tight Come on, it's actually not, it's the length I think that's holding it up. I 
be warned guys the sprues for the gun are on their own so obviously there is an intention of Tacom or DAS work are going to release an 88 millimeter but uh, I think if I want another 80, 88 millimeter I'll get a border having said that it's not fair I haven't built that one yet so it's not fair to compare them having not built them inbox reviews as we've said before are great but you know I was over the moon with this when I did an inbox review and then I started noticing things so yeah okay so that's gone together like that and then we've got this little tiny handle here Arrow 38 and that is going to go on the bottom okay so that is going to sit it's probably going to get snapped off Drop a cement in there and then that little piece is going to sit on there so we just put it roughly in position and then we can there we go put it in like that and which way round does it go they want it sticking out do they I don't want it sticking out it's going to be broken off so I'll put it like that right um Oh dear. Right, so and then this piece here, we've got L1 going in, so it's the same as the other side. So that one again is tight. Put some cement around it, lock it in. Okay, and then we've got H20, which is that tiny, tiny, tiny little ball. I should have left a sprue on this, shouldn't I? It's got this little tiny pin on the end. That one's going to go in there. You can see that one there has gone together. Okay. <clears throat> Squeaky voice, as uh, as James says, and then H forty eight is that lever with the snapped off end. So what I'm going to do is just put a drop of cement there, and then pick this up by its handle. I'll come here and put it down there there we go oops I hate doing all this tiny stuff on camera there we go so that's that on there and then H3 decent sized part at last is going to go over that raised circle there so that's going to sit like that. We can put some cement around there. Drop under there. Okay, and that will also protect that piece with the broken off knob on it. Okay. Let's go brush some extra thin around there where that sprue gate was. Clean that up. And then we've got this little piece on the back, H19, which is absolutely tiny. And that is clearly some kind of break or clamp or something. Just look, there is no location for it on there. So I'm trusting the instructions. Are... I think the carpet, no, it didn't, it's on my leg. No, it's not. I think the carpet monster just got that bit. Let's see if I can find it. That was unbelievable. There it is there. It was sat right on the edge of the bench. So uh, what I'm going to do this time is put a drop of cement in here. And I'm going to pick this up and just place it in position. There we go. That reduces the risk of it dropping anywhere.
there we go so that's how that assembly looks so that's um step 29 b step 29 a and step 29 c if you like with that little lever on the bottom so um the next thing they're telling us to do is actually assemble this around the barrel so this is going to go together something like that and oh look it doesn't fit yes it does sorry so that's going to assemble around the barrel and then our breech block is going to slide in there okay so it does actually go in and out right that's good the trouble is when it's all the way in it leaves the end of the barrel exposed so that's a bit of a shame if you want to have it in a firing position they probably better to have it in a loading position right and then I'm assuming then that barrel will fit okay it's got a flat on the barrel but it's only on that bottom edge so it kind of will engage and then that will go on top like so and my advice had I look forward in instructions my advice to you guys would be to do this assembly and then fit all those little bits afterwards because now we've got a load of sanding work to do and all those little bits little bits are going to want to get knocked off and this will not go down around and the front face isn't flat you can see when this is put together that front face is like a bloody chevron so we're gonna to have to deal with that as well because that looks awful So, oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, we've got seams to deal with here, all the way around the side. We're going to have to deal with that on the front. And obviously, we're not going to be able to deal with that on the front when the barrel's fitted. So we need to somehow, I think what I'm going to do is cut that out of there to make it into a circle so I can slot the barrel in afterwards. Because then we can glue this together. Yeah, sod it, let's go for it. I'm just going to glue this together like this. The fit of this is not very nice, really. Plenty of cement in there, so we've got nice solid joints. They can take some uh, super glue for sanding, and then that will slide into there like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we'll knock that out of there. And somehow, like I say, guys, if you're doing one of these, leave. If you're watching this, Jeff, leave all those bits off. I deal with all the filler work and everything first. I'm bound to knock all those parts off when I start sanding this down. Even just holding it's going to be a tragic chore. Right, and then what we'll do. We know the reason that slots there is because it is here and, and what it is with that slot on the left hand side the actual seam line is vertical so um that's what we can do we can make sure the gun is the seam line is vertical when we fit it in the breech and what we'll do is we'll cut that out so that that will just drop in so there we go right so we've done that 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 Right, so um, there we go. I will see you all for part, well, what's it going to be? Part 11, I think it is, isn't it? This is part 10, um, and we'll start looking at getting the rest of this together. I think in the meantime, I'll deal with this seam and everything off camera and get that all nice. And then I'll show you how I cut it around and make the barrel fit. But um, I think I'm going to have to start looking at these instructions seriously because there's a lot of stuff to go on that's just going to get broken off. 
I was thinking this is all just going to go together lovely because most of this kit has fitted together lovely, but this is not very nice at all. So I'll see you all for part 11. Thank you for watching. And um, hope you've enjoyed that. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Thumbs down if you haven't. And don't forget to hit that subscribe. And if you want to see more of this, hit the notifications bell. And YouTube will notify you when I put videos out. Thank you for watching again. Bye for now.